Welcome, everybody. It's Podcast Unlocked, episode 435, remote edition. We may be working from home, but we've got a ton to talk about this week. The full Xbox Series X specifications have been revealed. We know just about everything now. So let's dig into that. Join us. Podcast Unlocked. Welcome, friends. Episode 435 for March. Goodness, March uh, 17th, I guess, 2020. I'm Ryan McCaffrey. Welcome to my home and welcome to the Unlocked Cruise Homes. (laughs) I will go counterclockwise starting, or rather just clockwise, starting at the top. Destin Legary, also on production today. Thank you, Destin, for handling producing duties. No problem. I got it all set up. Good to go. We got some good stuff to talk about today. Keep your eye on, I feel like I'm like the hosting Hollywood Squares right now. Brandon Tyrell <laughs> in the uh, upper right square. We're going to be waiting for, right uh, yeah, we're going to be waiting for Penny, his dog, to come just bombard him at some point. It's which is happen. That's what happened during our test recording yesterday. It's already happened this morning, so yeah, she'll, <laughs> she'll make an appearance somewhere. You've got me in the lower right corner and down uh, in the lower left, right over there, Miranda no. Sanchez. So the funny thing is, hello, uh, welcome to my apartment. That's my skeleton. That's one of my cats. The other one's on my lap. That's Fusion Frenzy. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, we're actually configured differently. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. So you're like, great. So you're like, over here. And I'm like, you're a puppy, uh, though. Well, you know, I tried. I tried. I love but, it. I love uh, it. Yeah. Two things. Miranda's absolutely right. It's totally different. Miranda's on your left. I'm below you. Brandon's in the bottom left. Um, uh, also, bam, let's get started <laughs> with the Xbox news. Yes, uh, there is a lot to cover. But I mean, I, we, I, I know people want to tune into this podcast and talk about Xbox, this awesome, fun hobby, and this incredibly exciting year of Xbox. But let's just, let's just address the situation r- once, and then we don't have to speak of it again until it directly pertains to the world of Xbox. So uh, we are all here in the San Francisco Bay Area on now a, it is not a lockdown, but it is a mandatory shelter in place. So we are unable to even go to the office if we wanted to, which it's already, you know, this the situation with with uh, the pandemic is, is a serious one. So we're all uh, bunkered up here at, at our respective homes. And we just hope that Everybody out there in the unlocked audience and the IGN audience is staying safe and staying healthy and staying, uh, you know, d- social distancing works. It matters. Please observe it. And uh, we, we you know we all just want to we all want to come out of this healthy and happy and ready to celebrate Xbox once again. All right. Public service message aside, uh, <laughs> welcome to the first ever pants optional episode of Podcast Unlocked. <laughs> Who knows if I'm wearing pants? It doesn't matter. I've been waiting five wrong. years for this. Yeah, you might be a pantsless person over there. I, I just I got pants no, on I, right there. Okay, he's he's got he's he's passed the test. But so the, the nice thing about being a woman is that I can wear dresses. You guys can wear dresses too. That's but true. Anyone can, but it's always pantsless options for me. Which is nice. But I am definitely wearing just leggings. We're going with full leggings. Yeah. The entire. audience, <laughs> yeah, the audience can go pantsless every episode, but we oh, have yeah. always traditionally had to wear pants. Yeah. But for now, be presented uh, now. The shackles of workplace <laughs> are gone. <laughs> there is no HR. There's yeah. just it doesn't exist. I hit I hit crazy traffic getting here today in the hallway, just bumper to bumper. <laughs> took me up, took yeah. me five extra seconds to get here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, yeah, we it, it's been a big week. Monday we had a, a huge drop of Xbox Series X news, uh, but uh, but but also by the way, the current year of Xbox still going to be really good. Before we even get to that point. Doom Eternal out this Friday. Ooh, my yeah. review of the single player is up now. Spoiler, I loved it. Nine out of ten. Uh, it's funny on the Dan Stapleton's gonna hate me for saying this. On our old scale, it would have been I'm not sure where I would have landed, but yeah, it's you know, whole numbers now, but it's it's got you know it's it's an he easy can never now. know that you're he even never, no. thinking about it, this. <laughs> <laughs> I I tell you, I I've, I've thought about a 10 for a little while, but mm. once I actually wrote it got to the end of like no this is this is a, a rock solid nine a rock solid amazing out of 10 on the ign scale i just can't encourage everybody enough to play this game it's so much fun i have to say though i i did play on pc i know we're, we're a pc friendly crowd here 
in the world of Xbox. I, I need to go fast. I need to be able to rotate on a, in an instant. The, the thumbsticks, this is the one game. Doom's the one game where the thumbsticks just don't cut it for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've got a lot to get to. Let's go to Series X. Destin. Yes, sir. How, uh, how have you been soaking this in? See, there's that penny appearance we've been waiting for. There <laughs> she there. is. Destin, how have you been soaking in the, the knowledge this week? There was a lot to take in. Yeah, I've been doing my best there. You know, there is just so much info out there about how it's all going to work. And uh, I've really, really been enjoying it. Uh, I think the console actually looks more exciting. I know initially I had said where I was sort of wishy-washy on if I was going to get it or not. But the quick resume is really interesting. I like a lot of the tech specs that they've been sharing. And it was really fascinating to see it being put together because it really gives you an idea of how the airflow is going to work in the console and the actual power behind the graphical processing units. People smarter than I am have been just <laughs> tearing this thing apart and telling us about every little detail about each of the pieces. Literally tearing yeah. it apart and then telling yeah. us the details about the pieces. Yeah, yeah. The 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 air intake's really interesting. If you're standing it vertically, it it's pulling air in up through the bottom, passing that air up through all the parts that are heating up, and then exhausting the hot air out of the top. It seems super super clever. And that's really I don't know about you guys. That's probably the number one conclusion I came to after just ingesting all of that information this week. I watched all the the YouTube videos. Uh, Digital Foundry. There was the tech YouTuber whose name I foolishly didn't write down. Austin uh, Evans. Actually, thank you. One of my friends and co-podcaster slash co-vlogger from back in the day, Jimmy Champagne, is a good friend of mine. Uh, back then, works with him, so he got to go hold the Xbox Series X. I said, Jimmy, I'm very jealous. I I actually <laughs> loved his presentation. I'm going to show a, yes. just a short clip of, of what he presented to to the sure. audience, sort of going over the tech specs because we're discussing about that now. But uh, yeah, I I really thought he did a good job of showcasing what the console was in sort of a fun way, and I felt more informed after watching his video, which was mm -hmm. which was wonderful. So yeah. check out the full thing for sure. Yeah, same for the Digital Foundry piece. Again, I, I said this on Twitter, but I know it's it's my job to get, try and get everyone to to read and watch and click on IGN content. But but really, the, the Digital Foundry piece was it's it's long. It's twenty three minutes long, uh, w but with Richard Ledbetter. But it is just a, an unapologetically hardcore deep dive into the technical specs of it. And even though you might have to kind of rewatch a couple bits <laughs> again to try and let it sink <laughs> in, but I tell you, by the end of it. I was really convinced of the tangible, actual, impressive benefits of the console. I mean, we've been excited about this thing for a while now, but let's get into it. And then I guess we'll kind of talk about, about why, at least why I'm personally super sold on it at the end. So uh, the actual specification to the 12 teraflops is, is accurate, but it's, it's actually 12.155 teraflops, just to, to dig in a little deeper. It's running an eight-core CPU at 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, if you, if the developer chooses to enable uh, multi-threading, they clock down just a touch to 3.6 gigahertz for for each thread. It's a custom Zen 2 CPU. Uh, I was curious how much RAM this thing would have in it. We knew it was going to be GDDR6. We didn't know how much. It's 16 gigabytes of RAM uh, to go with the. RDNA2 GPU that of course there's your that's your 12 teraflops there and uh, what I, we were just talking Brandon you and I were talking off air it can effectively run with ray tracing 25 teraflops because of the the work that the ray tracing engine is doing on the on the DirectX hardware accelerated side yeah 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 the RT hardware integrated into it actually <clears throat> handles all of that and and the digital foundry video said something just like mind-boggling which is something like it tracks the intersections of light and surface to the degree of like 38 billion intersections per second which is just a number so big you can't really think of it um but hardware side it manages all of that so all 16 gigs of the ram are, are free to you know uh handle other processes or, or whatever it is. So effectively with the RT hardware running and the RAM running, you get, yeah, roughly 25 gigs. Yeah, well, the, uh, 25 teraflops. And the, uh, a, 20, um, 25 teraflops, yeah. yeah. And a quick note, the, there are a couple gigs of the RAM reserved for the operating yeah. system, just to two, clarify that two for point people. Something. Yeah. 2.5. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so that uh, because you know, I think you guys mentioned it a moment ago. You know, stuff like quick resume that we'd already heard about mm -hmm. is going to you know, needs needs some of that RAM. The the cool things that the the OS level side is doing is uh, does need some memory. So um, we got to finally see what the actual back of the console looks like after. The one false start from the fake AMD uh, CES render, and then the back of the prototype that was posted online. So the, the real back of the console has, of course, the, the power supply plug, and it is confirmed as you could we could tell from the plug. It is an internal power supply. Uh, it's we've got two USB three ports. We've got the mystery port, which we'll talk about in a second, and then uh, an Ethernet port and just one HDMI out. So no more TV, TV, TV pass through, which was expected. However, the one port that's not there that I'm personally a bit saddened by, although with, I, I'm, so I'm using an Astro A40, these are the headsets, uh, which I, I love at home. It's great for when my family's asleep and I'm gaming at night. I can still, I can go USB there, uh, but I am, I am bummed no more optical out which is a surprise to me. Every single Xbox console up to date has had uh, an SPDIF optical out. Yeah, uh, I don't like that. As a big audiophile myself, I utilize that a lot to get audio a different way to my Astro specifically. And I'm kind of surprised it's not included in any capacity. Uh, do you use that a lot? I see you have Ori in the background. Like, did you utilize that in, with the Xbox One X, right? Yeah, I, I've been utilizing it against since the original Xbox. I mean, I've 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 been I wouldn't call myself I'm, I don't think I'm quite worthy of being called an audiophile, but the original Xbox was capable of on the hardware side outputting Dolby Digital 5.1 sound, which remember back then that was not a normal thing. That was uncommon. So I had bought I bought a whole 5.1 speaker setup and had it all set and. All, I, all the Tom Clancy games in particular were always really, really good about the sound, whether it's Splinter Cell, everything's all around you. If you're playing Ghost Recon, you can hear shots from behind you. Always love that. And I've, I've uh, over the years since I've had a kid, had to migrate to Dolby headphones. But yeah, I've always, always connected through that optical cable. So I too am a, I'm a bit disappointed about that. And uh, if and when we get the chance to talk to Phil again in in some way, uh, shape or form, I was uh, he was going to be in town for GDC this week, but obviously that's that's long since canceled. But yeah, that's I, I've thrown that on the list of things to ask him about. I'm I'm sure there is a good reason. I can't imagine they omitted it for. Well, I, I doubt it's for cost. I would be surprised if the reason is cost. I'm sh my guess would be that it was for space in that very mm -hmm. tight uh, cube, but. Who knows? I'm still disappointed. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's talk size. So we've got the official measurements. We were, uh, d I guess none of us thought to bring home our mock-up. Oh, oh, yeah. I was just thinking down. about this, actually. We yeah, we could have measured it to see exactly how close we were. So the actual measurements, I'm going to give them in, in uh, non-metric. I'm going to give them for our American audience. <laughs> so it's... Uh, 5.94 inches uh, on, you know, it's square on, on two of the sides. And then the height is 11.85 inches for a total of 418 cubic inches. The one X. So that's, that's behind me. You've got 11.8. So it's 11.8 inches wide, 9.4 inches long, and then just the 2.4 inches high. So it is volumetrically larger than, than the other consoles, but still, mm pretty darn compact particularly when you know just to remind people I st i'm still seeing this online uh just to make it clear for folks you can lay it down i know destin that was a big deal for you oh well i just wanted to see what it looked like laying down as yeah an option yeah i just want to see it in different shelves of laying down it's like okay how is this going to look how far does this go back like what can i put next to it um i'll probably have mine out displayed but on that area over there um, <laughs> with the new TV, hopefully. But it's kind of nice to just have that image of like seeing it laid down literally on top of an Xbox One X and comparing mm. it that way as well. Yeah, and that's the, a cool uh, thing about it. It is as tall. The One X is as tall as the, I'm sorry, the Series X is as tall as the One X is long, which means right. if you're running, Wide. if you're running, yeah. 
yeah, wide, yeah. If you're running your One X vertically, then the Series X will fit in the same spot, assuming you have the the, the right amount of width in there. I, I would hope you have 5.94 inches. You have six inches of width in wherever you're. Whatever, I'm like, you're trying I'm to very cautious it. about airflow, so I don't put anything next to my consoles. But there's some yeah. tight squeezes that I've seen. Well, speaking of airflow, uh, we did also get the confirmation uh, this week now that there it does. If you're standing it vertically, it does sit on a little round stand, which assists oh, yeah. that airflow we were talking about. So it's a lot better uh, than little feet. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yes, no feet, but a stand, and that that airflow can come on up through. So it's it's looking good. It's uh, it's the, the what the guts inside are incredible. Now let's let's get kind of a little deeper here. One of the big new features, Xbox Velocity Architecture. That is the name that Microsoft is giving the, uh, for sort of the, the uh, delivery, the, the, I guess, internal movement of things effectively. So that includes the high-speed SSD. Um, and I have, to, I have to pause here and note a, a confirmed spec, which I was sadly wrong about. And I think I owe one or more of I, I thought two terabytes for sure on a next gen console. No mm -hmm. dice. Mm -hmm. One terabyte is is included in this thing. So who who did I lose that bet to? Me. Just in and out. <laughs> Let's <laughs> call it wait. all of us. <laughs> yeah, Can you just I'm cater. In and cater out. the next episode. <laughs> I, that is our only option. Yeah. So when this is all over, I'm going to take all of you guys to In and Out happily yeah. because uh, I'll just miss you. Number one and number two would be a good excuse to to pay pay off a bet. But yes, one terabyte, which, again, it makes sense in the sense that this is an insanely high-speed drive uh, compared to what's what's in any console now. But it's, I'm still a little disappointed. I know they have to try and keep the cost down, but if this thing is going to be $600, which we'll talk a little bit about our updated expectations for price at the end of this conversation, but if it is going to be a premium price product, I'm still a little disappointed that it's not a two terabyte, but right. the mystery port, Miranda. I guessed it. I'm so excited. It is a memory card slot, which is very exciting uh, because I like memory cards. It's like a very weird nostalgic thing for me. It's like carrying around your little, your little box of memory cards, a little cat, um, and just like be able to label them for what, what's on there. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of different ways to maintain our saves now, but having something like that just to quickly expand your storage, hopefully not not too much of a cost, will be very nice. So it's like a whole terabyte to add in from Seagate's thing that they've made to work specifically with the Xbox Series X. And so I'm sure it will be just as fast as what you would have. Or it is indeed. Say. Yes, it is indeed. The, it'll give you the exact same performance. Uh, it is, as you mentioned, it is a, an official partnership with Seagate. They'll be the official supplier of this thing. We don't know the cost yet. However, I would expect it to be pretty darn pricey. I think a hundred dollars so, yeah. is is at the low end yeah. of yeah, what this thing might cost. The floor, at least a hundred. Yeah, so we actually talked about this on our daily live show yesterday, News Games and More. You can check that out at 4 p.m. on nice uh, you, YouTube Mixer and twitch.tv slash IGN. Um, yeah, we talked about it, and I actually happened to look up the price of how much drives cost. So a one terabyte Seagate is about $149.99 on sale. So okay. uh, with a proprietary thing like this, I have to guess – they're going to be 199. That's my price estimate I, for the expandable hard drive. That that I would not challenge you with on a bet. I think you're you're probably right about that one. That sounds that sounds pretty reasonable. Now the upside, at least as far well, as I, I don't I know see about it, I don't know about reasonable, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, not an exciting number for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I was mean, like maybe a be... hundred on sale if you're like really looking to the future. Like that would be nice, but. 150 is like optimistic 200 is maybe realistic the good news though is in my opinion that's not a thing that you need to budget for on day one right, along with the right. console and tax and any games you might want to buy uh etc etc because you've got a terabyte granted there'll be some of that partitioned off for the os uh, but you'll have a good amount of space to work with from the outset and if you have an external drive now keep it because your existing Xbox One, Xbox 360, original Xbox backwards compatible games, 
w can run off of your existing external uh, because the Series X games require the internal drive or the official uh, SSD, you know, the add-on that Miranda was just talking about. So the Series X games need to be able to count on that new high-speed storage. Mm -hmm. The old games don't, so uh, you can... You can partition your games basically any anything older anything you've got now can go on to an external very cheap external usb drive if you don't have one already i've already got a two terabyte that i've been using for a few years now so you can you can reserve that series x one terabyte amount of space for series x games so you probably won't need to to, to cough up a, a, what's going to be a lot of money for that external memory card for quite some for at least a little while but Ryan, those load times are so so sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna bring uh, up the the load time. Yes, dude. Asset, I, I I was waiting for you to segue into that. Let's mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. So uh, games resume very very quickly. I saw some people commenting on this video saying, "Oh, it's not that impressive," or it seems like they're artificially inflating the Xbox One X. You know, just just people being a little bit doubtful, but immediately responding to that people are like no i tried this at home it's it's pretty accurate to what state of decay takes to load so, so on, yeah, on that like, point really quickly go ahead yeah i totally understand like whenever i was watching it did feel a lot longer because you're staring mm -hmm. at it but keep in mind whenever you're loading games you're probably not just staring at the game loading screen waiting for it counting the seconds you're probably like pulling up your phone adjusting mm -hmm. something grabbing a snack like there's a lot of things we do in between that we don't really take into account for load times and so mm -hmm. sitting there and being forced to watch it i think was like a good like smack of like look how yeah. slow this was and now yeah. look how fast we can be <laughs> look at this look at this <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, um go ahead destin kudos to the video producer on that shot by the way i actually really like the side by side so yeah right now the footage we're looking at dudes into the game the other one just loaded so when we started this topic they both start at the same time <laughs> one went right in and the other one just finished loading like wow. just now so if you're an audio listener that's about the difference it's about a full six it's about what a full <laughs> minute miranda was that what it was mm. I don't it was a know. lot. Well, there was it one was that really was like five seconds. There was one that was like 30, 40. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't have it written down. In the mid-20s. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm actually... Uh, it was fast, yeah. though. We'll get into yeah. this a little bit later. But I'm actually replaying State of K 2 right now because they just had a big update. Yeah. Uh, and I'm playing on PC, so the load times are actually quite a bit faster. Just because my, my rigs can support that. But PC, they are yeah. lengthy. They are lengthy, so I'm watching that video and I'm having like, oh my god, that's so quick, <laughs> that's so quick. I would, I would love that. You know, at the same point, I couldn't help like I get the point that Microsoft is making, but I, my heart felt, my heart went out to to Undead Labs and State of Decay, who I I love I love those guys and I do love that game. I just felt like it actually just made State of Decay look really bad <laughs> by by showing that example. It was just like. Yeah. Really? The loading times are this long? There's yeah. lots of load, a lot of zombies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in that regard, their update that they just released this week is uh, in has a bunch of improvements, technical improvements all across the board. So uh, the game's actually in better in a better state now than I think it's ever been. Yeah. Glad uh, to hear I it. Uh, the quick resume thing was also really neat, Ryan. I'm I'm yes. showing showing that footage now. So I, I like how quickly you can jump between games and how they, they hold their states. Do you guys think you're going to use this feature very much? Like, can you think of a practical application? I, I couldn't. Like, if I hop on my Xbox, like, I'm only playing Hellblade or I'm only yeah. playing Halo. I'm not usually going to be jumping back and forth between games. It is a good way to showcase the hard drive's capabilities and the speed of the console. But I, I'm just thinking practical applications. Can you guys think of an example? Yes. I, yeah. It's not game related, but... Oh, we're I watching. think right. a game related one. I think we're if watching. you're go ahead. like, it, sorry, go. No, you go ahead, please, please. <laughs> I got this you. whole interrupting thing is going <laughs> to be hard. really hard. We'll for get us there. To it's our first yeah. remote work from home show. We'll get there. There's a delay, so. Um, yeah, we're watching something on Netflix, and we're like, "Wait, is there a new episode of that other thing out?" So we got to hop over to Prime, and then it's like, "Oh no, it's actually on Hulu." So we got to hop over to Hulu. Uh, so being able to bounce around streaming services like that is something that I do regularly. That um, I will totally do, Brandon. I do that this, all the time. This will help. So yeah. I think 
as far as games go, I could see this being applicable in any home with multiple children who want to play on the Xbox Series X, but they only have one. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, mom, they got their hour. Now it's my turn to play, but I don't want to have to like completely quit out of my game. So now you can just like hop between both of those, which is definitely something I experienced growing up. So I think this will be <laughs> a lot better than having to pull out the disc, you know, make sure everything's saved, make sure that you didn't delete their save data, and then you, you pull it over. It's just like a lot more efficient system for anyone who's trying to share an Xbox, I think. So no. that'll be really nice. And here's my favorite point about that is as a kid, I grew up in that weird little gray space where it's like, mom, I got to save before I can shut down. I just got to <laughs> save first. I got to get to a save point. Yeah. And now Microsoft has taken that away from kids. You're like, no, no, no. You <laughs> get off right them from that extra 15 <laughs> minutes. Uh, <laughs> That's so now, now mom, like, it's, know, the streetlights aren't on yet. <laughs> yeah. Tech savvy parents are going to be like, uh uh-uh, uh, no. Here's the thing no, no, is. No. The parents don't have to know. That's the thing too, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am with you saying. though, Destin. I, I'm I'm old and I tend to just play one game at a time. So yeah. I probably <laughs> won't take huge advantage of this feature, but it's nice. But to, to Brandon's point, I would say kind of com- combining those points, I will bounce between a game and then like HBO Go and Netflix. And if you do that enough, you'll end up having to reload the game. So now uh, I'll still, even if I am just playing one game at a time, but then bouncing back and forth and watching uh, various apps, I'll still be able to to jump right back into that game. So I think there is still some value there in a, in a real world uh, setting for, for olds like me. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, definitely Absolutely. for my movies. <laughs> so another part of the high speed drive interface, the Xbox velocity architecture, is is interesting it allows the this high speed nvme hard drive to effectively be used as a virtual ram block allowing developers to access up to 100 gigabytes of game uh, assets which should be all of it probably uh at once so that that will also help speed up loading times as well so this isn't just a high speed drive it the the solution that and that's what i think that's one of the big takeaways that I had from from this this deep dive that we got this week is the solutions that Microsoft is is having uh, is applying to these problems. They're typically not just one big grand idea. It's a lot of neat little things that all come together to add up and make a substantial difference in in performance and loading times, et cetera. Yeah, you're, you're really looking at a lot of optimization so that they can do those heavy lifting and like kind of splitting up the tasks in really smart ways. Um, at least that's what I kind of came away with, not having the most technical knowledge, but being able to see how they're explaining each part of this and all these different systems that they're setting up so that we can have optimal game experiences and that also devs can get a little more creative with all the technology they have to work with. Yeah, yeah, lots of good stuff. Um, so game-wise... The coalition is uh, is is getting a Series X enhancement for Gears Five ready to go, which will make Miranda. I see, I see her smiling already. Already ready. She's I was just like, ready oh to man, go. get ready so to what, play some horde. What we learned, and that's very interesting this week, is Gears Five is already running over a hundred frames per second, and that the team is investigating doing a one hundred twenty frame per second <laughs> multiplayer option. Obviously, that would be 1080p, 120 frames, but it would be ridiculously fast. Uh, And the uh, team was able to get all of that up and running in a matter of just a couple of weeks. They they propped that up on Series X and got it out there. Uh, Again, I mentioned the team announced they'll have a Series X optimized version of Gears 5 available at launch. So, Miranda, once you're done with Halo, once once you're done with any other launch titles... You, you may want to revisit Gears because it's going to look and run a whole lot better than it already did. Absolutely. It's very exciting. Um, I, I'm so excited about the frame rates. Like, you don't even know. Frame rates in first-person shooters are such a huge thing, and third-person, and, like, just any shooter. And so being able to just scale all that up on console is just, like, just so nice. Well, the question now for you, Miranda, is is that is that display we're seeing behind you, is that 120 frames capable? <laughs> <laughs> or are we going to be shopping here soon? Um, you know, it is not. So people are telling me, it's like, oh, 4K TVs are pretty cheap these days. It's like, yes, 
but I don't want just any 4K TV. <laughs> I want an OLED. <laughs> so that's that this... was my decision, I, and I'm, I don't want it at all. This thing has been it was it was a lot of money, and I waited a long time and saved up. But I'm I I am very happy with that decision. So it's I I can't I have I am happily to endorse you on on that decision. Yeah, and it's like I recently moved, and I have way more space on that back wall, so I can actually get a bigger TV. And I wanted to make sure I was investing in something that'll go a long time. And I think that's something that I, is really important for me. So I was like, all right, if I'm going to drop down like 1300, I want to make sure it's like a good investment, a good size right from my space. And so that's why I will have a nice one to run Fusion Frenzy in the future. <laughs> <laughs> to run Fusion Jesse Frenzy, Frenzy, yes. No, <laughs> also big shout out to everyone who tweeted to me the morning the Digital Foundry just video dropped. Everyone was just like, Miranda, did you see that they, they, so they showed Fusion Frenzy? I was like, you guys, you're the best. So I was really happy to see y'all giving those shout outs. Love it. Um, what else? So the uh, this is from the Microsoft, uh, the Xbox Wire blog. Players will see the benefits of the improved hardware of Series X for backwards compatible games, including improved boot and load times, more stable frame rates, higher resolutions, and improved image quality. The compatibility team is also continuing to create entirely new techniques and innovations that we can use to further enhance the existing catalog of games when running on Series X. Xbox team is, is uh, so committed to the concept of compatibility and uh, cross-generation play that not only do your games move forward with you, so do your accessories, which we already knew, but also uh, they just make sure we're clear on this. Your game saves, your progression, everything moves forward. They create your entire gaming legacy moves forward with you to the next generation, which is how it should be. Big old claps. Just make me so happy. <laughs> yeah. You don't I mean, have to drop everything. Well, I mean, this, this uh, again, brings us back to one of the, the big pre-Series X titles, Cyberpunk. So uh, I think a lot of people that may have thought, well, I, maybe I'm going to sit this out until the, the next-gen version's ready. Maybe you don't need to sit it out anymore. Maybe it's going to, even without a, a specific... If that specific Series X optimization uh, update doesn't come from CD Projekt Red on day one, you're still going to get some kind of benefit by running it on Series X. Uh, I'm incredibly excited for Cyberpunk. It's coming out a little bit later than the other, ti other titles, like you said. And just talking about all this optimization stuff, uh, yeah, I I think like once you get it in your home, it's going to be more easily conveyed like just what you're getting one of the things i actually liked in that video that uh what was his name created austin, austin oh, evans I, awesome. it's, it's actually up here right now he he got two tvs side by side and he talked about the hdr and the the heat oh, yeah. map of the televisions and i actually really really enjoyed that part because it kind of gave me an impression of what the console running with the new hdr settings would look like right so I enjoyed that a lot. Also very excited about Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, so what Des just to clarify what Destin's saying, so Series X will be able to effectively add HDR to, to titles that, that were never designed for it. Right. Like the example that they used was Halo 5. And Fusion Frenzy, actually, that and Miranda Fusion has Frenzy. behind her. Yeah, and it was cool that it goes back that far that they're, they're creating that addition. So I, I appreciate that wholeheartedly. Yeah, it's fantastic. That is great stuff. So, um, again, I want to encourage everybody to, uh, hopefully my bosses aren't listening to this, watch Digital Foundry's <laughs> video. It is a commitment. It is, uh, it's 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 watching a, it's like watching an episode of a very dense TV show. It's 23 yeah. minutes long, but it's super worthwhile. Um, it, the Now, the conclusion, I, I want to go around the, the panel, however the heck we're arranged here, <laughs> and, and get everybody's thoughts. Because for me, I mean, I was already getting excited, but... To me, this this uh, information drop this week is what really, really completely pushed me over the top on this thing is going to be worth it, whether it's 500 or 600 or what. And we'll talk about price next. But because for me, you know, you could you could a Sony fanboy could say, well, there aren't going to be any total exclusives for two years. Well, OK, but if you upgrade to Series X, you are getting. 4K and 60 frames standard on everything or or higher or up to 120 frames. You've got these crazy good uh, accelerated loading times. And then uh, something that, Destin, I don't think you had footage uh, for this queued, but 
Uh, I was really, really won over by the ray tracing demo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's let's talk about that because, yes, even Minecraft, a game that you don't think of as a visual powerhouse, it has its specific style, right? But the, 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 the A, B, ray tracing on, ray tracing off, for, uh, for Minecraft day. was incredible. I mean, it was absolutely incredible to me. And I think really between, again, between for, for me, it's those three things. It's the loading times, it's the, the frame rate and resolution, and it's the ray tracing where that it, it's going to be such a worthwhile jump to, to upgrade to the next generation. What do you guys yeah. think? So I didn't have the I didn't have the Series X ray tracing, but back at Gamescom last year I actually got to play and capture it on PC. So I'm showing that footage now. Um, Great. And it's absolutely phenomenal. It's it's really, really cool what this can do, even for a game like Minecraft. So that's my take on it. Uh, Minecraft is a is sort of a, a game that I think a lot of people could be cynical about, but just imagine this and how it can be applied to you know, higher quality games. I'm not using the right terminology here. I'm trying to be careful. Like imagine this in Halo is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, imagine this yeah. in Gears of War. It, it's going to, you know, have that same effect in those games as well. I mean, Halo Infinite alone for me is is uh, is enough. I mean, for mm-hmm. day one, like to, to just be there on day one. Like I, w- I want to play Halo Infinite with ray tracing and at 4K60 and with super speedy loading times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I actually think Minecraft's kind of the perfect game to showcase ray tracing, which is all about straight lines and bouncing off of surfaces because Minecraft is made up of a series of cubes made of different kinds of surfaces. So, you know, there was always that moment in Minecraft when you enter a cavern for the first time and you see the light and and how it just, you know, the pools of lava kind of diffuse the light a little bit through the cavern. Um, and I always thought it was cool because walking into a big cavern with waterfalls and the God rays streaming through is pretty awesome. But to see that in with ray tracing enabled is totally night and day. It is the perfect game to really show how light can sort of tunnel through small holes in the earth. And, um, I, I think more than anything I've seen so far, the Minecraft one really blows me away because also people do think of it as more of a lo-fi game and to be able to see a low what is considered a lo-fi game kind of brought up to industry lighting standards now is is night and day and really kind of shows the the power and the uh the usefulness of that technology the simplicity conveys it extremely well i think is the point yeah. you're trying to make and you're absolutely correct randa did you like this yes <laughs> more than yes um i was really excited to see oh excuse me um new features kind of Ooh, excuse me, kind of coming about and a little bit more explained. So like just having specific examples of all these new lighting effects is really nice, but getting to see having multiple games running and switching between them really fast is good. Um, getting a little bit more of an explanation on the airflow is nice too, uh, just because we see this big tower and you want to make sure you're putting it somewhere safe, right? Where it won't burn up and that it's all optimized well. And kind of getting in into like Austin Evans video a little bit more. Uh, they went through and talked about the structure and how it was designed. It's like, oh, if you accidentally put a book or something on top of your Series X, like there's still things planned in and how it was designed for the top massive fan to be able to still get that airflow going. And so it was really cool to kind of get those deep dives into how the structure is actually built and engineered. Um, mm-hmm. I also really liked that they showed Easter eggs. I like that there's a, a nice little snake inside on the uh what are they called the i wrote this down because i wanted to to, to say it right the main board mm-hmm. just the main board yeah to... and the and the master chief on the fan track. on the fan yeah they have like this little nice sticker of the master chief and they kind of emphasize like please don't take apart your xbox series x you should never <laughs> see these but that those sorts of little details exist is really nice um and i mean like ryan i was at this anyway like there's no way i don't but just having that knowledge of what we will expect is always reassuring it's like if you're gonna drop down some money on this you know you want to know what you're getting (laughs) well and speaking of that money i mean that's that's where i want to sort of wrap up with this conversation is uh where are you guys feeling about the price and so what do you think the price is going to be with 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 this extra knowledge and and are how do you feel about that price with this new knowledge uh because again to the uh the Gears 5 example earlier that we were talking about, what I didn't say was uh, that they were running it, they they basically just ported it over and had it running at 
4K ultra settings from PC on the Series X, and it was it was without any actual optimization work going in, and it was already running insanely well. So, I mean, the it's not that I mean, my PC is nothing to to really write home about anymore. It's a it's an i5 at 3.5 gigahertz with a with an RTX 2060 in it as of recently, which I grabbed from the IGN office to assist with the Doom review, and I've got 16 gigs of RAM, so like. It's it's better than the PC that I just reviewed Doom on, uh, <laughs> so that's that's pretty impressive. And it's just if it's really going to be doing like what it's doing to Gears, this the, the the value proposition here is incredible. So how do you guys where do you, what do you guys think the price is going to be, and how do you feel about that? Can I, Brandon, can I go? I'm going to go. I'm going to go right. Brandon's way first. I I still like where we were at before. I know I I was a pretty uh steadfast in my you know flag planting at the 500 hundred dollar price point but after seeing sort of what is gone into the machine now that we have the full tech specs i think it's a little easier to say that i think 600 is probably the sweet spot and i think i think you're probably right about that and i still like the 456 structure of Ser the series s at four ps5 likely at five uh we'll know more about that when they reveal all their tomorrow. specs tomorrow uh, and the Series X at six hundred dollars. It's a premium. It is the premium version of a luxury item, which is what game consoles are. So uh, I think <clears throat> them demonstrating everything that this thing can do and how much better it makes your games playing. Understanding that because they've already come out and said we're not going to focus on Series X exclusives for the first couple of years, the sort of the the immediacy with which people sometimes feel the need to upgrade and you know move on to the the next gen isn't really going to be as strong this time around i don't think so the series x is really the optional best way to play your video games and i think it kind of falls back on that 1x playbook which is do you need it no is it the best way to play your games and third party games so far the answer seems like yes so what was, what was your price brandon six six um for the series x yeah got it um, so IGN actually has a fantastic article breaking down the price of all the components inside and the price of all that stuff put together was about $1,000. So I actually absolutely agree with Brandon. I think it will be $599. You're getting a value of $1,000 if you get this box, if you were to build a, a PC of similar specs. Uh, I, I don't see a world where they bring it down <laughs> bring it down to like 499 and i saw some people talking about that yesterday i think this is a 599 nine dollar console miranda uh i agree that's probably gonna be no. 599 i mean it's, it's a dark hard horse to, but i'm gonna raise it to 650 just in case <laughs> just so we have some variation here honestly Oof. i don't i hope i hope they don't go any higher than 600 but you never know yeah, I think it's pretty unanimous. I I, I think it's I, I think it's going to be five ninety nine, and I think they can get away with it in the sense of the you know the the, risk, the, the dis discussion I've been seeing on my Twitter feed is they can't do five ninety nine. That number is like cursed forever from the PS three and the five hundred ninety nine US dollars. It's twenty times change. <laughs> yeah, times change, and the value proposition here is is just so impressive, and the difference between the PS three and the Series X is what you guys were talking about with the Series S. They're going to have a reasonably pr more reasonably priced option, so it won't just be oh my god, the new Xbox is six hundred bucks. It's well, there's a new Xbox that's six hundred bucks, but there's also okay. another new Xbox that's four hundred. <laughs> uh, how much do you think? How much do you think this phone was, Ryan? Uh, Twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> well. Uh, that's how much mine was three years ago. This is the cheaper model. I think it was only seven hundred. It's the only seven hundred. Yeah. Also, oh my god, I have so many Slack messages. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even yeah. know where my phone is, and I was just like, you know, it's probably fine. Yeah. So, yeah, so if a console, bad. if a console is five ninety nine, that's meant to be like a home entertainment device. We got to remember, it is twenty twenty. It's not the PS three era anymore. Like adjusting for inflation, I I think that's. Uh, pretty in line with how much the parts are gonna gonna cost and i think 
uh, Microsoft is that's still at a loss. One thing mm. we didn't actually talk about is the potential for scarcity of the the console. I think yeah, they probably have it. they probably have their initial manufacturing done, run done, and due to what's going on in the world, I think we are going to see significant delays. So I think there will be a a coveted aspect to those who get that console really really early on because it's going to be very very scarce initially. What do you guys think? Yeah. Do you think I'm wrong on that? I mean, remember what happened? Was it around Katrina or slightly after? I'm sorry, not Katrina. The um, the 2014 one. Sandy. Anyway, mon- monsoon season hit, um, and uh, hard drives were basically non-existent. Like you couldn't yeah. couldn't find one. And then you know, with with Bitcoin and the GPUs and the scarcity of that, I mean, it's not hard to imagine that something that brings the entire global economy to a standstill is going to affect this. So I totally agree. I think. Their initial run is going to be good, and then 2021 might have some scarcity to it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's I, there's just it's, it's it's so impossible to determine. But I would imagine that Microsoft is there, there's you got a choice, right? Do you release in limited quantity or in uh, a non-global sense, maybe just one or two regions? Do mm-hmm. you do you, or do you just straight up delay? And if you delay. Do you still ship Halo Infinite? Probably not, since that's your Series X highlight title. Do you yeah. ship Forza? Probably not. Do you ship any other launch title? Maybe. Maybe just say, okay, well, just it's out on Xbox One X, and go ahead and we'll, and it'll be ready to go whenever we can get Series X out. But yeah, I, the, the 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 next six eight months are are going to be very uncertain. But um, yeah. But yeah, the bottom line is uh, this thing, the Series X is has has really convinced me that I mean, this is it has shown that it is effectively high end PC uh, capability in in a in a tight console, plug it into the TV and go package. So that's well worth five ninety nine. You know, the, my I, I don't know about you guys, but I do. I upgrade my phone. I, I'm lucky that I I do it every three years. Some people yeah. go a little, a little less often, some people more often. And, and really kind of that's where we're heading with consoles. I mean, the series X came, let's see what, well, I guess series X was four years after the original Xbox one. And now series X is three years after Xbox one X. So, you know, spending 600 bucks every three, four years is, is similar to kind of par for the uh, course smartphone, yeah. smartphone mm-hmm. behavior. Yeah. So it's not to say that it's, it, that it's easy to spend that money. It's obviously, it costs a lot of money to do that. Now with, with, I think most of the major smartphones, I know this is for me, they just, they'll, they'll give you the, the, the 0% interest payment plan and you're just paying one twenty fourth of of the price of your phone for two years. I just finished. I guess I finished paying off my iPhone uh, uh, fairly recently, and so I, who knows if if that could be an option that Microsoft works in at some point. I I don't know. It's I mean they, they've dabbled in that with the um, was it the I'm blanking on the name of it now. The, the you guys know the program I'm talking yes. about. Microsoft program for buying Xboxes. I forget what it's called, but I was thinking yeah. about that too. <laughs> I've completely blanked on it. I'm sure the folks in the comments will quickly remind me, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot left to be figured out. Um, but that I, so bottom line, you guys uh, came away. Are you coming away less impressed with the series X after this week? The the same, like same level of impressed or more impressed more for sure. Brandon. Uh... Miranda. Oh, okay. <laughs> Miranda had Miranda had crinkly face, so I wanted her uh, to finish it. Yeah, up. just like barely more. Yeah, barely I mean, there's more. just a lot okay. of stuff that I would expect. It's like, oh yes, I would like ray tracing and all these optimizations that you want to be able to run on PC, but in a console for a little bit cheaper. Sorry, it's my cat. Uh, and just have something there that is very impressive. So I think for me, and more so, I want to see more games taking advantage of this. That's not something we've already seen. So right. I'm, I'm more so anticipating the actual next gen experience. I want to see what other features they have for the console. So I'm, I'm kind of holding my breath a little bit. Not that I'm not excited. It's just like, a, oh, a lot of really cool tech stuff that means some things to me, but not it's not the most important thing for me. Um, and there's like, again, expectations that of course it has to be faster. Of course it has to look better. Yes, we're checking those boxes off. How much better? That's kind of what we're getting right now. And that's really exciting. Um, two things that we did talk about really quickly. Yeah. That 
there's no light at the top of the Series X because mm -hmm. we thought there was a yeah, green it's light. just paint. Yeah, it's just paint on the inside oh. <laughs> of the top, so but that's it's, not a light. It's, it's a cool it, optical illusion, though. Yes. Yeah, they said they needed bigger holes at the top, so they added that uh, weird sort of, I guess, trench to it or, or beveled. Concave, um, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. concave to it. And so depending on the angle that you look at it is how much green actually appears. So it looks like it's it's brighter in the center. It's such a smart, cool little design. Yeah. So I like that. And then also they got to touch the controller a little bit, um, which does look a little bit different. It's a lot more rounded. Um, and Austin Evans said when he was playing with it, it seems like it's a little bit better for smaller hands. And as a small woman, I'm just like, yay! Not that yeah. I have any issues with the current controller and I'm, I'm not giving up my sweet, my sweet Series 2. Mm. elite controller but um it's very exciting to be able to see all these kind of innovations come forward destin are you running that controller footage right now yep yeah yes. so let's yeah i guess the, the other thing to mention about the controller uh besides what miranda touched on is the the uh bumpers have uh from what i could tell look like they've got kind of a um a little sort of texture grip thing on top of them which i thought was like they're not just they're not just smooth anymore. This yeah. is a this is a series two elite. Uh, so I think that that'll be a nice a nice addition. Uh, and then the D pad is as we said kind of a kind of a hybrid of of what we had and then and this guy. So I'm eager to give that a try. But um, oh, and th th on that note, for those curious, it will it it will not be an internal rechargeable battery as in the elite series two. It is sticking with removable double a batteries at least in the vanilla version of the controller i don't know how you guys feel about that i'm i i don't mind it uh but I, now i'm at the point where i'm very much expecting a series three elite after the console comes out that you know that has the new sh the slightly new shape and a super impressive uh rechargeable battery built in i'm uh I like having the option of installing a rechargeable battery personally, so that's not a deal breaker or anything for me. Uh, agreed. I also just have rechargeable batteries anyway, so just be able to use those is fine by me. Yeah. Ryan, uh, I'm running out of time. <laughs> oh, for, for what? Uh, for your, other, for this other... show? Because you got to yeah. do other things? <laughs> yeah, sorry. All right, so Series X, super exciting this week. Uh, plenty more to talk about. There's uh, we'll, next week we'll get to we'll have to do unlock box trivia and the loot box. There's uh, there's a lot left to talk about, but more meetings beckon, more things to get to. Uh, despite we may be working from home, but there is uh, plenty of work yet to be done. So hope everybody enjoyed our little Series X reaction deep dive here for Brennan Tyrell, who sadly was eaten by the internet monsters. Miranda Sanchez, Destin Legary, I'm Ryan McCaffrey. This was unlocked 435. And we'll see you back here next week.